Now, with 365 days until the opening ceremony at the Paris 2024 Olympic Games, Limerick's Sarah Lavin received her European Games bronze medal today in a special presentation, which is made by the permanent TSB CEO, Eamon Crowley. Permanent TSB, I've been proud to support Sarah and the whole of Team Ireland ahead of the Paris Games. Fantastic, firstly, before we talk about Paris and one year out, to finally get your hands on this lovely bronze medal from the yeah, European Games. Yeah, yeah, it was so... Um it was I was I was I was dying to know what it was uh, what it was actually going to look like and feel like, um, but yeah, it was a funny way to win a medal. You know, I always you dream to spend your whole life um, dreaming of how you're going to win your your major medal, your first senior major medal, and um, I did it sitting on the couch at home, <laughs> which was a bit funny, but. Um, yeah, I it was still a magnificent performance because I guess on the Wednesday morning, I went out at ten a.m. Um, had pretty much a solo run and ran 1282 and um, Division 2 was on that night. It was just the fact that we were relegated due because we didn't send a team in COVID. Um, I wouldn't typically be in Division 3. Division 2 and had the European silver medalist from Munich last summer. And um, I was watching that intently and um, was hanging in there. Then again, after that, I was still in the lead. And I said, oh, but, you know, when it comes to the, the top guns, the powerhouses of European athletics, you had the GB, the France, you know, the Switzerland, you had uh, Poland, Pia, who's the European champion. We're all going head to head on an afternoon race where you typically run that little bit faster. The body's a little bit warmer. Conditions are that better, better crowd and a you know, the, the stands were effectively empty for us on the Wednesday morning, whereas obviously it's Poland. It was on in Poland, so the crowd, the atmosphere is going to be good. I really didn't think it was going to going to make it through. Um, I saw the, you know, I was almost watching it saying, slow down, slow down, slow down. <laughs> but I wasn't really, you know, wish, wishing everyone had their best performance because that's, you know. And uh, the first time crossed, I think it was 12.77 or 12.78 um, for Pia. Then Nadine from the Netherlands ran 12.81. And the French girl ran 12.82. And I thought, oh, OK, they're, they're going to give it to the French girl, you know, that she. But no, they went down to the thousand of a second and I got it by one one thousand. So, um, yeah, I was delighted. <laughs> don't don't get me dip. wrong, by a thousand of a second in a race where you'd all been in the same race would have been probably slightly more thrilling. But at it the same time, have. was it nice to be at home with family, I'm guessing with finger food and champagne ready to go just in yes. case? Yes. Well, it wasn't just, no, we, we got it. We didn't want to <laughs> tempt phase or anything but afterwards yeah there was pizza and champagne that was exactly what was on the table um yeah it was it was um lovely to to share the moment with my parents they wouldn't have been there in poland you know at the time so um yeah it was nice really really nice um and i guess the best in europe were there in the hurdles it wasn't a token medal the best from every country went um you know it was slightly different in some other events but um the best girls were there and um yeah it was it's nice I guess to be a year out and yeah in shape of my life yeah I mean look this summer has been fantastic we'll talk about how you followed on uh, from the European Games in a moment but how much of a landmark does it feel to have the medal now in your hand because you say this is um, this probably does feel like a very important moment in your career yeah it's kind of like it's kind of nice to to have something physical I guess um, and they can't be taken from you and um, the European Games is the first time that athletics was going to be held into the in as a European Games medal so the European team championships would have been always kind of separate you know and this year um, and to be part of the greater team you know it's the Olympics is so rare that you get to you know be a part of the same team as the boxers who are incredible athletes you had the rugby sevens did amazing um, Jack Woolley in Taekwondo the kickboxers like it was you know they they all won medals um, but you know there was people who just missed medals too who were phenomenal athletes um, at the European Games but to be a part of uh, a greater team is really a special thing that you only get to do a couple of times in your life you know and um, I still remember the crack we had in in Tokyo with the hockey girls once we were finished you know they're, they're not times you get unless you're, you reach that very pinnacle of sport and I think it's the people you meet along the way and um, the experiences you have they'll remain so ingrained you know but um, it's nice though I'll have something physical all the same <laughs> to remember these times because the way I kind of felt for all of you going and particularly for first time Olympians going to Tokyo because it was so different yeah. to the experience before and even chatting to Jessie Barr a few weeks back and she was saying it was 
difficult even from a psychological point of view she was trying to condition the athletes to say look I'm really sorry this isn't going to be the same as major championships you're going in there are so many conditions around this it's not going to be full stadiums you're not going to be able to socialise maybe in the uh, athletes village in the same way that you would have been before I, what was your experience of Tokyo did that colour it a little bit that it wasn't normal of course you know you as a kid you dream of full stadiums noise piercing noise your heart racing all these things you know how are you going to control your nerves suddenly you walk out in the start line and I kind of thought to myself gosh I'm not even that there was 40 coaches in the stadium and media um, it was a bizarre experience of course you know but um, a very significant one and one that would be very specific to Tokyo Olympians because please God we never have to live through that again so as hard as it is it's also I think we'll look back in time and think gosh that was a really special Olympics because there'll be no Olympics like that hopefully ever again mm. you know that will go on behind closed doors effectively yeah and like to the athlete the most important thing is to be able to go and compete and to be able exactly. to say you are an Olympian whether there's yeah. zero people there or 20,000 oh, 100% um, but certainly it was different you know and now you're looking at all this Paris um, you know the promo and the Seine and the opening ceremony going to happen down the Seine and where they're having the medal ceremonies and um, yeah they're really you know the, the French want to do it really really well and I think it's so close to home now it's going to resonate with so many people here so many kids are going to be so inspired and this will be the turning point for them to say I'm going to go and do that and when I'm te in 10 years time or 15 years time you know um, uh, Sonia won her medal in Sydney in 2000 and I took up running in 2021 when I was seven so I don't think that's any coincidence that you know what you still remember Part, you know, there's there's significant moments that when you're a kid, you do definitely remember hype and buzz and excitement, and you want to go and do that someday. Um, so I think the fact that it's going to be on the same time zone, you know, people won't have to set their alarms at 2 a.m. or 3 a.m. Um, to, to watch will will be really hopefully, you know, will lift the nation and in in the way sport can do. And um, yeah, it's totally so, exciting. So yeah. Sonia Sullivan, the hero growing up then, or was it Dervil O'Rourke? Because I oh, I couldn't, you couldn't ask me to think that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you couldn't ask me to pick that. Um, but how fortunate are we to have such two strong females that have competed on, in athletics on, on the highest of stages, you know? And you know, we're talking here, the, the, the girls at the World Cup for, for the football, that's inspiring so many kids now as well. And, um, you know, the, the boxing, okay, like we've been, ver we're very fortunate in this country. We have had incredible sports women and men that have really inspired us, um, you know, to be to become the best. But yeah, don't ask me to pick between Sonia and Derville. I will have to meet them both in the coming months. <laughs> uh, look, the, the obvious way this is going is I've been looking at your times throughout the summer so far, and you are getting down into <laughs> Derville O'Rourke record territory. Derville's won 12.65. Uh, you're getting to that kind of 12.7 territory now at the moment. You're not too far off a record. No, um, I'm not. You know, 12.73 and it, I hit the last hurdle in 12.74. It really messed up my first hurdle in Monaco and to run 73, 74. They're my three fastest times in the last couple of, in the last, in July mm. of my life. So, um, yeah, that's something that I am very proud of, but uh, getting close to Derville's record is very different to taking it. So, yeah, we want to go one step <laughs> further. My gosh, she set the bar high. Um, 65, I really will have to do everything 100% perfect in the, in the moment. Um, but I like doing that. And, um, yeah, I guess we've national championships this weekend um, the hurdles are on Saturday and I'm going to run the 100 on Sunday um, I've one more tune up in Switzerland on the 4th of August and um, then we'll head out to camp the following week and Budapest for the World Championships um, the hurdles the first day is 22nd so um, yeah all, all roads leads to there I think it's Global Athletics it's the biggest marker we can take a year out from the from the Olympics and um yeah, it's, you know, hurdling globally is, is in a really, really, really healthy state of affairs. Um, so it will demand national records and more in order to, to make the world final. Um, no Irish female, I believe, has ever made an Olympic sprint final. So that's in a one, the two, 100 hurdles, the 400 hurdles. No Irish woman has ever done that. And... You know, you're looking, Rashida's knocking it out of the park oh. at the moment. Kira McGean was absolutely 
like mesmerizing last last Friday in, in Monaco and to be there and just, you know with her that moment was yeah Does that so help the team? Like when you see Kira going as well as she did like I think all of us looked at the time on Friday evening and went whoa that's fast whoa that's an incredible field at that Diamond League event in yeah. Monaco and then you realise wow this is right up there with the best mile runs of all time of this has beaten Sonia's record like it really puts into context what she achieved oh it's it's quite phenomenal what what Kira did um, you know it's to have the, the Irish record is better than the US rec- mile record the British mile record the Australian mile record like that's phenomenal little Ireland competing there with the, that's what Kira has done you know um, it's incredibly inspiring and to be at these massive meets doesn't get much bigger than the Diamond League in Monaco as you can imagine the port is one side of you the track's the other side of you and you're thinking to yourself I got really lucky they gave me a suite I don't think they messed up on the rooms a little bit not bad you didn't quite get a yacht by the team of course not bad no and you're kind of thinking God this this I've met it this is this is as good as it gets um, and yeah I guess like, Irish Athletics is in a really healthy place at the moment um, with you know you're arriving at a Diamond League and Kira and Rashida were there that was really really great you know you're not you know hanging you're not, not not the only Irish person there looking for somewhere to sit down and you know I think Do you socialise together as a group? Of course yeah 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 have have lunch dinner you know all those bits and um, I was fortunate Tom Byer was at the Diamond League in, in Doha um, Andrew Crossgren was there in Silesia and um in Stockholm also Kira was there and, and to get those happy like to get that hug from Kira after in Stockholm at, when I finished second to be there for her now in Monaco like that's really really cool to think that um, yeah you're it's you're Irish and it's possible you brushed over second in Stockholm ever society there quite a significant result <laughs> in the grand scheme of things where the uh, passport has to be ready for next year and she books the place and you just go eh, she was great she was there when I finished second in Stockholm um, what a significant night to be able I guess so far out to know you've qualified for the Olympics must be a big relief as well massive and I think like for Tokyo I think I must have been the last Irish athlete to qualify I got in on the, the world ranking system and I was right to the wire uh, this time around the first day possible that one can run a standard and yeah I think there's something wonderful surrounding me at the moment um, in my performances and to pop out you know yeah that was it was a funny one as well because I was in the national race and basically the three of us there was one lane free in the diamond race and they said you know there's three of you we're not going to give it to one of you in particular we're going to let you go head to head oh my goodness it downpoured like it was lashing like absolutely lashing and I just kept saying good Irish weather like they you could barely see out and I was keeping the eyes open and um, yeah the once I won that they put me into lane one in the diamond race but I'm not sure if you know tracks dra- have drainage into lane it's one it's not so the lane you want there no not the lane yeah so there was a nice well, I set up the blocks um, for the main race and uh it was just a massive puddle after after hurdle one I kind of thought like oh like if I if I could judge it not that you have any you know your body knows exactly where I, like, I wonder is that the hurdles and the puddles, but still. yeah but you're out there thinking well I missed that one now because it'll be a right splash because <laughs> it was literally as you were landing but um yeah I, you know um very it was 12.73 is a quick time um given the conditions it was a, a good race um but it needs to be that's you know um it's not it's I have big goals and big dreams and I want to achieve them and um, yeah I guess knowing where I was 12 months ago this is a really nice position to be in but where I want to be next in another 12 months is also you know these these performances to try to get consistent at 12.7 that's what you need to do to pop out the 12 sixes and then you need to get consistent at sixes to pop out the fives and you just keep on going the so yardstick, <laughs> the, yard, the yardstick is always moving it is it absolutely is um, and it has to be I think the day that stops moving is the day you have to walk away um and yeah, I think that um, not placing limits on what you can achieve. Um, yeah, I think it's it's a nice place to be a year out from the Olympics. It's not like 2022 summer was a bad one either. You were top <laughs> 10 at the indoors and the 60 meter hurdles and you were top 10. Um, you got to a semi-final at the Worlds and the 100 meter hurdles, top 10 in the Europeans. So it's not like as if you're coming off a bad base here. But as you say, you are shaving hundreds yeah. of seconds off this summer. Yeah, I think like last year, like it was fifth in Munich. I was sixth at European Indoors this year. 
was kind of fighting an illness for that one but anyway that was just the way that one went um, and seventh but you're looking at converting the fifth sixth and seventh into medals and I'm glad I could do this one here but you just want more you want one two threes that's the currency fans speaking that's the currency we speaking um, and that's what we want we want to see an Irish flag going up on podiums we want to hear the national anthem being sung they're all things that Irish people are extremely proud and the best sports fans in the world and I think every Irish sports person could attest to that you know um, and it's the ability of what sport can do the lift sport can give people um, and you know the, the smiles and the, pr the pride that it brings that's what I think is what's important to me and um, yeah doing taking great honour in every time you put on the Irish vest is um, yeah it's what, what what we want to do you see you know the margins here you're talking about thousands of a second where <laughs> Baptiste could be holding that uh, <laughs> bronze instead of you like you know what it's yeah. like to be on the right side versus yeah. the wrong side but these are the minuscule margins in athletics yeah they are and sometimes you're on the other side of it <laughs> that um, yeah it's it it's, it's all down to fine margins mindset is massive and doing like there's no room for errors particularly in the 100 meter hurdles there is literally you have to do once you do something wrong it's it's all out and I think in some ways we're lucky as hurdlers because we're there's 10 obstacles in our lanes or there's no we have to get through that we're not really worried about the person beside us because there's enough to, to have to contend with lining up in front of us and as a result I think we get all, all on quite well um, and it's lovely when you're on the circuit to be able to go for the coffees and the, the ice creams afterwards um, after a race yeah that, you know, that's all important too because if, you wasn't, if it wasn't the whole thing wasn't making you happy or it wasn't a positive experience I think you could get probably mentally burnt out but um, it's finding enjoyment in, in the whole thing and not just the outcomes I think that's what's really important as well because um, whilst this is lovely to have um, there's been many days of you know there's three major finals in the last 12 months that I didn't walk away with one um, and yeah I came close um, but yeah, I think ultimately it's yeah just getting better every time I go out and getting more familiar and being in those high pressure situations I think that's something that um, operating on the Diamond League circuit which is the highest possible level you can it becomes more familiar because um, you just want to be one of the best in the world and no, no different to everybody else the more you line up with them the more you realise everyone's just human so I wonder as well when we mentioned 365 days out from Paris does that help your preparation now that you can you can tailor it because very clearly like, you've got the target of Belgrade and next month's World Championships are yeah. what's very much on the rise and everything builds towards that but even beyond that you can probably tailor your training and whatever events you're going to use in the first half of next year Absolutely. maybe in a different way than if you were chasing qualification Absolutely time. I mean last time around for Tokyo whew, it was right to the right to the wire um i was i probably mentally and physically just exhausted by the time i actually got the qualifying because it was top 40 in the world and i went from 36 and i dropped out to 42 to come back to 38 to go, just to try and keep yourself eventually ended up 32nd and um I went to the games and finished 32nd but obviously this time around you're, it's a totally different mindset it's totally different prep I have that experience behind me but I'm coming in as a very different athlete and um, I had never made a major final before before that and that in itself was a massive jump that year to make that games for you know so yeah I think um, it's great for both my coach Noel and I Noel has been absolutely incredible you've known me. Noelle since what you were a child essentially yeah Noelle's coached me since I was seven wow. um, so she's a real she's a family at this point <laughs> but um, yeah I think I've been very fortunate to have her in in my corner through all my life and um, well up till seven to like the last what 20 something years I keep laughing that she's going to need the years of therapy after once I've finished <laughs> she's put up with me for so long um, what a so, bond yeah. to be able to maintain though over 22 years because mm -hmm. so many athletes have to lose their coach for 100 million different reasons they might move to somewhere else or they may well go into a different program or they move abroad to have that support and to have someone that knows you since you were literally a child um, has to be a huge support to have in the background yeah yeah, it's amazing and and I guess knowing how much she cares first and foremost about Sarah the person and not Sarah the athlete I think that's really um, you know we, we want to get the job done on the track but um, 
our friendship I think is is great and don't get us wrong like it's not all sunshine and roses no, all the time not. like any healthy relationship I think after two decades and <laughs> given that a coach has to be able to criticise along the way as well a crossword will be uh, probably passed from yeah, time to yeah although we haven't had we haven't shed a tear or we haven't had that now uh, so maybe it's coming up maybe I should get a bit anxious <laughs> um, but yeah no it's it's been beautiful to to share the journey with her and um, you know I guess she didn't know what she was signing up to when I rocked down to the track and I was seven years old and suddenly in Tokyo we were there at the Olympics you know warming up together and even last Friday in Monaco um, you know I think firstly she's a female and I think Kira McGeehan's coach Helen Clitheroe was possibly the other only other female coach I saw and this is like the powerhouses of world athletics you know they're big big coaching names and I'm so proud of Noelle you know and um yeah, she's constantly striving to make herself a better coach and um, seeking information. And um, I think the day that we stop thinking we know everything, we're very aware that we just want to get better all the time. And how fortunate am I to have a coach that has the same mentality as as myself, you know? And um, yeah, I think that it, to be able to share that with, with her is, is special, but yeah. I wonder what seven-year-old Sarah Lavin would have thought if she could think that before her 30th birthday she'd be a two-time Olympian. <laughs> First time she laces up a pair of runners to go on a track. Uh, yeah. You know what? Seven-year-old Sarah was... She was a big goal. <laughs> she was ambitious. <laughs> uh, but, yeah, I still don't think she could for a moment uh, grasp that everything that was ahead. Um, you know, but I think to any seven year old it was more anything is possible that every I meet kids after races now and I was no different looking for pictures looking for to sign you know piece of paper to sign things like that's um, everything is possible it's just hard work and discipline like and enjoyment and getting fun out of it because I think that's all any athletes that are that's all I did along the way and I know the same for Kieran McGee and probably the same for Rashida that you know we all just wanted to we had a dream and the most important thing is as a kid to have a dream and I take you know great privilege in the position I'm in to get to, to be you know at this position of my life and still be living it mm. um, and yeah I think dreams they get bigger and bigger <laughs> but fundamentally to actually you know be able to live out your childhood dream is something a few people are afforded um, and to get to do that I am very very grateful you couldn't really be living the dream much more than what you're doing right now this is a fantastic momentum of results that you've had and to be able to back it up because sometimes you, know, you could have a good run at the Europeans qualify for the Olympics and maybe the performance drops off but even um, what we about 10 days out now from the Morton Games you set a new stadium record on the lovely new looking stadium that it they is. had in San I think it's well. going to be a fast track and I mean yeah that, that day was a headwind and it was a wet track so I just I think that's a good sign of when things are when it becomes a tailwind and the sun is shining hopefully we can break that record again <laughs> and make it as difficult as possible because Durable has made, made my life pretty difficult right now it's and I'm sure there's someone coming up that's not coming. an easy one to follow admittedly <laughs> but sometimes athletes get into a hot streak and it feels like this summer you were on a really good run of form yeah I think they you know the only way to describe it is um, surrounded by something very special um, it has been a difficult few months as I'm sure many people are aware but um, I do feel that I take great honour every time I get onto the track to, um, yeah, to represent everyone in my life very proudly and to do my utmost. I think that's what's really important to me. Um, I'm very much taking everything day to day and living in the present moment, um, not getting a, a day or two ahead or a step or two ahead. And I think that in itself is leading itself to quite good performances because everything is very acute. So, yeah. Yeah. Like, um, to be very sensitive about this, I, yeah. I'm very sorry about Craig's passing and I think it affected everyone in our sport at the time. And um, I thought you spoke wonderfully um, afterwards as well, talking about the fact that you always felt that he's still there, he would want you to be achieving right now and that he would have went along to even the smallest indoor events to support you along the way and you still feel that very much is in your presence. I think um, 
it's a beautiful thing to be I think what you've just alluded to there that you still feel that he's very much looking down on you and wishing you well as you get ready for this adventure in Paris as well yeah for sure um, Craig was an incredible sports person and an amazing ambassador for Ireland um, he achieved on the biggest stage you possibly could achieve um, you want to do him proud you want to do his family proud and yeah of course I miss him every single day um, and yeah, it's just um, knowing that he lived out his childhood dream and he would want me to do nothing else. Yeah, I, I think he'd be incredibly proud of Thank what you've you. achieved this summer and what you're going to achieve beyond this as well. I would think the, the Athletics community has probably been very important around you at that time too, has it? Yeah, the Athletics community has been fantastic. Um, to, you know, I think there's been, even in Monaco last week, the amount of Irish flags. <laughs> I don't know, there must have been a lot of Irish people down the south of France on holidays <laughs> that decided to take a trip to Monaco um, for for the athletics, but it was a fantastic evening. Um, but I did have to smile when I crossed, when I crossed the line. I said, gosh, I think this, the only country flags I could see that were out in abundance seemed to be the Irish flags. Um, again, a testament to Irish sports fans. Um, and also I met many kids that were that parents had brought their kids and they were so excited to be there and again you're just thinking like you're going to come out here you know then the, the in in a couple of years time and are you going to try and beat this record that you know um i met a little girl and she said she runs 600 meters and so that would kind of be leaning her more towards kira mcgee mm -hmm. now rather than <laughs> than than the sprinter um and yeah, and you could just see the, the glint in her eyes and it was a beautiful thing to see that, you know, she had watched a performance that she knew was remarkable. And um, yeah, I think it was, it's it's lovely to to see, to see that and to see the effect that it has on people and, um, you know, going up to the stands and, and getting to spend time with, with those people was really nice because they've been, as you said, a really good support. I think people getting really involved in interest in athletics is testament to where our athletics is going right now. We had Rashida Lecky on the show last night. She, she's going to be a superstar. Yeah. Like, like, and you know what? She is a superstar. She is. People oh. say she's going to be. She is. Right now, what she's doing is just remarkable. Like, you know, and uh, just good for her. Yeah, she's she's smashing it. And, and there was part of me that when I heard she was going to go pro a couple of weekends ago, I thought, this is an awful pity because it was another year of NCAAs here and maybe she smashes more records for Texas and wins more competitions yeah. and they've got a great team. On the other hand, I can totally understand why she wants to focus totally on the Olympics. And this is the chance to share the stage with yourself and Kira and the others at the Diamond League as well. This is going to be a huge year for her preparations for Paris as well. Yeah, I think, you know, um, the pinnacle of athletics is Olympics. And that is like that is as big as it gets. It's the biggest sporting stage in the world. And when people think of athletics when people think of Olympics, they think athletics. Mm -hmm. And the Olympics is such a massive brand. And for athletics to be, you know, you think of athletics, you think swimming, gymnastics, I'm not sure, everyone has their own different sport. You don't want to, you know, zone in, but you definitely put athletics in there when you're to name the top three, kind of when you think Olympics. And the truth is, if you think of the Olympics, you think of the 100 metres final. <laughs> you know, I didn't want to say Gen it. But, it genuinely yeah. is. I think yeah, there's, yeah. And there's two major events I think yeah. of when I think Olympics, swimming and the track. Yeah, yeah. And, it, you know, I guess obviously you're biased when you're involved in athletics and um, other sports, you know, uh, that's not taken from any other sport. I mean, every every Olympic sport and uh, competes, but it, people particularly zone in on athletics Olympic year. So I totally understand. Um, Rashida is running phenomenal times now. And why not experience this right now, you know, and take it for absolutely everything? You know, I think um, it's also an incredibly humbling sport that you have to live in the good times and, and acknowledge them when they're here. Um, because, you know, I went seven years transitioning from a junior to a senior athlete without running a PB. I, I've experienced the struggle, you know, <laughs> that kind of way. And, well, like you already and, mentioned, you know, where, where yeah. times can be can be yeah. tough, uh, even when it comes to injuries, when it comes to yeah. illness, you mentioned them before. Yeah. Yeah. Like they can set you back and next they, thing yeah. you're chasing, trying to get back, you get injured again. So you have to take it when you're given that opportunity. You take that with both hands. Um, what Rashida is doing is phenomenal right now and um, it's very exciting 12 months for her and I'm so delighted for her to to have this you know going forward and she seems just very um, grounded in her decision which is amazing to see you know um, yeah I think she's she set what the 200 and 400 national record now outdoors and um, 
yeah, we, we need national records because they're tumbling at the moment. Though. They are tumbling, but they need to be. Mm-hmm. So it's yeah, um, they need to be because global athletics, you know, the standard is so high, and in order for us to be able to compete with the best in the world, we need to we need to have them smashed. What represents a good world championships for you, or what do you put say as a you know if you, if I was to talk to you in a month's time and you come back, what would represent a good world's? I don't operate in good. I'm going to say what would operate, what would be a great world championships, and that would be making a world final. Okay. There's no other way around that, you know. I think you could say who wants to be good. Like you want to like making a global final is was a, would be phenomenal. But it's you know you're it's going to take a massive massive run. It's going to take a national record and some. And um, I don't think it's out of reach. But at the same time, we have to acknowledge that like it's possibly going to take a 12.50 something to make that yeah which is huge um so yeah we're gonna give it a bash of course we will <laughs> um no different to to the rest of the team that are going to be out there everyone wants to perform to their optimal you know no Irish athlete puts on that vest and wants to perform suboptimally um everything has to go right being a championship performer and performing on the day is paramount to to championships and um, I think it's incredible it's going to be an incredible measure of where we are 12 months out mm. to the Olympics you mentioned the Olympics and the importance of it did you get a tattoo after Tokyo? no <laughs> uh, I got there was a ring gifted to me which was lovely because okay. <laughs> David Gillick was telling me I did a podcast with him and Eric Donovan uh, during lockdown and he said it took his wife to convince him eventually to get the to tattoo because he was so unhappy with the way that he ran at the Olympics because okay. poor old David said he put so much stock into it because as you know he was such um, mm, a phenomenal right. talent yeah. and had done so well outside of the Olympic Games yeah. and we were all guilty in the media of, particularly when Beijing came around it was like this is David's preparation games by the time 2012 comes around this guy's going to be smashing it and going towards medals and so on and he always felt for whatever reason it never quite happened for the Olympics so he waited and didn't get one so it was such a regret that he waited so long to actually get the tattoo are you waiting for the end of the second games to get one or are you just, <laughs> I don't know. Are you just not a tattoo kind of person <laughs> I don't know I don't know I don't want to um, but I, I appreciate that and we were also the um the um, OFI, the Olympic Federation of Ireland, gifted us beautiful necklaces. Nice. I don't have it on today, but um, yeah, it was lovely as well. You know, we just don't want to walk around like a complete Olympic. I don't know what, <laughs> have it across the forehead. But um, yeah, I don't know. Um, but yeah, that was that necklace and the the ring is was beautiful and very grateful. Yeah, to, to, we'll see, we'll see. <laughs> Where is this very nice chunk of metal that you have in front yes. of the table? Where is this going to go at home now? Um, I, I'd love to know where to put these things. Yeah, I'd love to say somewhere. I don't. I need to get thinking because I have the you know the the European Junior Medal from 2013 was maybe two or three times the size of this, and uh, there's a European Youth Olympics Medal as well. So um, yeah, I, they're actually they sound might sound terrible, but they're actually all on a windowsill. Really? <laughs> I know. Well, I but I need to. I need to do something special. I guess to design a cabinet or something like that, you can put them into because that's a nice set now. Junior, youth, and now a yeah, senior. Medal, yeah, yeah. It actually, you're dead right. Yeah, it is. It is lovely. Um, and yeah, two bronze and a silver. So yeah, we just need to get a gold now sometime soon to complete the collection. <laughs> well, no pressure. The best look getting ready for the next little while ahead of uh, August and for Belgrade. It's going to be a really important step along the journey, even towards the Olympics next year. It's uh, great to have the ticket punched, even at this point, uh, to know that you're going to Paris next year. And of course, uh, your supporters with Permanent TSB, who've been uh, supporting both Sarah and also Team Ireland ahead of the Paris 2024 games. Thanks a million for dropping into the chat. Thank you so much for having me.